So from our previous graph, this is what we had. And we also calculated this value. This value was 1.22 meter, oh, sorry, not meters, it's seconds, 1.22 seconds. So uh, even last time I said the area under the graph is the distance traveled in this amount of time. So if we calculate the area, which is apparently very easy to do, we can easily find out how far this ball traveled. So let's do that real quick. Area is given to us by half times, you know, BH, which is half times 12, or it doesn't matter, uh, 1.22 divided by two. And I get 7.32 down to the last uh, second decimal, right? Seconds, sorry, meters. That's the height. So essentially, the equation we did earlier and this area, they're the they're both the same method. The equation doesn't is a less visual way of understanding the same problem because you're putting in the same va values and calculating it through the area. Well, the equation turns into a graph, and the graph is a shape, and the area you can just calculate using in a simple geometry. So essentially, you're looking at the same problem, we just did it in two different ways. Now you can decide to do it using the equation or using the graph, whatever you prefer. Uh, what I kind of like to do is use the equation, but to know I'm using the equation correctly, uh, like after doing 10, 20 of these questions, it'll automatically in your head, uh, the graph will start forming and you'll, you'll be like, oh, that doesn't look right. You know, like maybe I'm doing something wrong. So it's a very powerful tool, very powerful way of self-reflecting and figuring out each step of the way um, if you're putting everything right in the equation because physics is kind of straightforward. The questions really force you to really tweak your equations. So if you can do that successfully and you have a fail-safe which is the graphical method. You can do it in your head, and if it gets too complicated, you can just do it, make a quick rough diagram like I did, and just tally your working, and uh, you'll have a very good idea, right, of how this is going to work out. Like for instance, if this is 1.22 seconds, and this height is 12, and the gradient doesn't look like as steep, but it's negative 9.81, right? So that means for one second, the speed attained is 9.81. So this gradient should have been a lot more steeper. So if I'm getting a very small value of time, because it's only 12 and in the first second, it'll already drop down to by 9.81. So I can understand why the second value, like if this was 10, I'd be like, oh, that doesn't seem right. Because between one and three seconds, this graph should touch over here. That's the power of, you know, getting, uh, so if you made a error in the equation while calculating it, maybe you, you know, mistyped something in the calculator, you can quickly um, realize that like, oh, I shouldn't be getting 10 seconds. It shouldn't take that long, right? All right, let's move on.